the fancy title I came up with, but don't remember. Yeah. So inspiring this- ideas for the classroom. Okay. Okay. That was it. All right. Do you know who you're talking to? Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Joining us today on our inspiring ideas for the classroom edition of Superheroes of Science is Mr. Greg Smith. So welcome, Greg. Hi. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you taking time to uh, sure. help more than just the teachers you help on a regular basis, but to help a broader audience today and um, to share some ideas that you have and things that you know about with more teachers. Sure, happy to help. And so what do we have first? Is it Nearpod was one you're gonna talk about? Sure, I'm happy to talk about Nearpod. So I don't know uh, what your audience is familiar with in terms of technology, but a tool that I used in the classroom a lot was Nearpod. And I know uh, right now there's a lot of interest in figuring out how to do direct instruction online. And for me, uh, Nearpod was the very best way to do any uh, direct instruction through using a computer. So uh, Nearpod basically for me was perfect because uh, I had grown up teaching using a lot of PowerPoints. And what was great about Nearpod was you could basically take your PowerPoints and literally drag them in to Nearpod and make them interactive. So uh, I would basically start with, you know, an old PowerPoint and then along the way, uh, you can add uh, slides into Nearpod that have some interactive activities. So there's a whole slew of them uh, that you can do. So you could do like an open-ended question. So uh, I just looked back at one I did about the Vietnam War. And so I would start that lesson off with a, like a KWL activity, like what do you know already about the Vietnam War? And so in the classroom, when I would do this, you know, I would introduce it and say, okay, everybody at your computers, like, what do you know about the Vietnam War? Maybe your uncle or your grandparents were there, and then they would take a few minutes and they would type in an answer. And then Nearpod will then allow you to present those answers on the screen in front of the class. But in this situation we're in now, uh, you can also do this at a student paced level. You can basically have the kids do this activity on their own, at their own time, and you can even record your own lecture voices onto it. So you can uh, do all kinds of activities along the way. Uh, So you can do like open-ended questions. You could do like a matching vocabulary activity, quizzes. Uh, You can incorporate Flipgrid uh, and do drawings. You You can collaborate with other kids. You can do polls and fill in the blanks. So you can basically make an activity any way you want it to be. um, And then you kind of go back to your old slides and move through a lecture. That all makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to say I I do love uh, using your pod, how easy it is to take that PowerPoint and just drop it in there and it makes those slides for you. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it's easy to add those things that you mentioned. I know when I do my uh, weather one, I have a picture of like the water cycle with no labels and I have students label a path, you know, a path up of water drop, mm-hmm. so label what's happening and, and what water are these precipitation and things like that. So I like having them draw their own water cycle in yeah. that. And uh, then I like doing pre questions on there too, along with uh, check questions to see, make sure mm-hmm. they're through it to make sure they're uh, actually doing things. Exactly. Cause like in the old way of, you know, our kids these days, like they don't have the attention span that we might like when we were in college where you could sit through a lecture. But but I look back at my college notes and I see all kinds of doodles on the side. So maybe I wasn't paying super close attention back then. But here you can break it up like, OK, I'm going to talk to you for five minutes about like what Southeast Asia looks like. And here's a map and here are the major countries. OK, now that you've seen this, OK, here's a blank map. Fill it out. And, you know, neurologically, the more you are um, introduced and challenged to recall information, the the stronger those uh, neural connections form and the the learning becomes deeper and, and, and thicker. So that's really a great thing about it. You can keep asking the same questions. You can talk, respond along the way. 
so it's a great tool. I, I use it all the time and I try to, you know, modify every lesson a little bit. Every lecture has a little bit of everything. So maybe an open ended question, some quizzes. I would do a poll. So in the Vietnam lesson, you know, after talking about all the controversy, the question was, would you be a protester or not? And then the kids kind of have to decide yes or no. And then you get the, the reading of the class and then you could have a, a class discussion about it. And that that you know enriches the understanding i think mm. you had mentioned with the nearpod that you could also record a lecture mm -hmm. uh, with that and so then the students would then they they would be able to access that at home yeah absolutely yeah. so i tried what it a couple that? times yeah you could it's a very simple tool when you're editing the slides there's like a little recording button on the bottom and then you can record what you would say if it was in class at the time. So, um, so yeah, so you could definitely use this for direct instruction. And, and you really get a report and you get a report at the end of every, you can get uh, sort of a general report about how many of the activities kids did. Uh, and that's what I would use when grading them. I would say, okay, you did the assignment and this is a low stakes, you know, quizzes, low stakes assessment, just did you pay attention and did you do what it was asking? So I would just give you the full 10 out of 10 if you did all that. But you could go and get a richer um, set of data about how kids responded to each of the uh, questions. You could read everyone's open-ended question. You could read how everyone responded to the poll. You could see everyone's quiz scores, all that stuff. Wow. So you could, so that's kind of nice to know that you can record from the actual Nearpod mm -hmm. yeah. app itself. And then is that able to be posted on like a learning management system? Like just, you can put, how does that look? Is that just a file or a? Yeah, so um, what I came to do was to put them in Canvas. And so that was our learning management system. It's also very, uh, it's, probably even more friendly for a Google Classroom, you could edit any of your slides in uh, Nearpod with Google Slides, but uh, I just use PowerPoint. Um, and so you could just basically um, create an assignment in Canvas, and then if you've set it up, it takes a little bit of understanding about how the mechanics work, but it's not too complicated and an IT person could help you. You could basically have that assignment be this Nearpod student paced lesson. And then the kids would just click that link and then go to the assignment and then do it. And it would automatically be linked to Canvas and how much they completed of it. So you could actually see their results in Canvas for each individual student. If you don't want to go through all that, you can in Nearpod, you can just say, I want a link to this student paced lesson and you post the link and then you can also see every student, uh, every everyone who does that assignment in Nearpod's performance. The only drawback of that is uh, since it's not connected to the learning management system, the kids have to put their own names in and they might not use their name that you know them by, they might not use their first name. Uh, and so that's, that's just something that happens that uh, you'd have to get used to. But as a tool, it's really, really, really powerful. Now, your school corporation, correct me if I'm wrong, you have the premium version or like the school version, the paid version? We do, yeah. Can you integrate like the free version if someone wants to try it out? Because I used to always use the free version. I've taught yeah. with Nearpod a, a hundred times and I really enjoy it and use it. Yeah. But uh, can you integrate in the free version? Do you know by chance? I don't know for sure. I okay. uh, I've had it for so long as a paid version. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're not paying for it again. It's really expensive uh, after this school year. So I can't say for sure, but you can, you know, if you have a kid sign in and teach them how to sign in, the free version works very robustly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not it's not too much of a drawback, but I'm not sure about that. Mine, they just have to use their, their class number. If they didn't have their class, I always last name and number. And if they didn't have it on there, then, well, you just don't get credit for it. Not my problem. <laughs> I'm a mean <Yeah>. teacher. <laughs> you got to just do what you got to do. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> but okay, and I like that one. I like how easy it is to use Nearpod. It um, everyone seems to really enjoy that when you show them. They're like, "You can do what? <laughs> I can take my PowerPoint, and drop it in." Like, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm not, you know, I, I come from a history, social studies background, but in Nearpod, there are also some uh, incorporated uh, programs like FET, P-H-E-T, which I know a lot of science and math teachers use. And there are some amazing simulations that you can create in Nearpod with the FET program. So I was just looking at that, like you can uh, like skateboard ramps and adjust the angle of the, the ramp and the velocity of the skateboarder and then figure out, you know, the trajectory of the skateboard rider. So that's a lot of stuff that maybe some of the science teachers would be interested in exploring. That's also on Nearpod. Oh, so you can actually, I didn't know you could integrate that into Nearpod. Uh, that's a new one. Yeah, that. I'm not sure. It might be in the free version. I don't remember all the distinctions mm. between the free and the, uh, the paid versions, but that's, that's, some, that's a feature that is on there. That's fair enough. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. But it, the only the one drawback, I know I, I'm sure there's limitations to the paid version too, but the free version, some of my PowerPoints, I had to compress my photos because you, oh, really? it, the file it has to be of those can't be too big, whatever. So I can't remember the max, but it, it mine always end up putting a lot of photos and stuff in them. So I had to go through and compress them all because the file was way too big to upload. Well. The workaround I discovered to that is sometimes when I would copy a PowerPoint over into Nearpod and it would take a million years. Basically what Nearpod does when you do that is it converts it to a PDF. So it's like an uneditable file, at least from PowerPoint's point of view. Um, but if you convert it into a PDF and copy it over as a PDF, it's faster and it might work to solve your problem. Uh, I like that tip. I'm gonna try that next time. <laughs> I can still have my pictures back. <laughs> All right, so there's another program we're going to talk about, too. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. It's called GimKit. Uh, yes. So, Your whole school was like crazy about this when we did that workshop last summer. Oh, yeah. So uh, GimKit is uh, a good way for uh, review. So Nearpod's a great way to do direct instruction, like introducing new material, using technology, but GimKit's a way to just review and practice understanding. So uh, people might be familiar with Quizlet, which I think is still an awesome program and a great way to create flashcards uh, and ensure understanding. But what GimKit does is, uh, from my point of view, is basically I would take a, a Quizlet set and convert it into a GimKit. And basically it creates a game. And it's a really like powerful and fun and constantly evolving uh, game where kids have to answer questions based on the vocabulary words you give it, and the, they, get, they get money for answering questions correctly. So uh, it's different ways of doing it in a live classroom setting. You say, okay, we're, here's, we have 10 minutes, and then we're gonna play this game, and then everyone at their computers is getting different questions at different times and different paces. So unlike, say Kahoot, which I think is great also, where everyone is playing at the same time, getting the same questions, and maybe I know the answer to this question like immediately, and then my neighbor over here takes all 30 seconds, and I'm kind of like twiddling my thumbs. GimKit rewards kids for the speed of their comprehension and memory, and gives them another question, and another question, and another question. And what's fun about the game is that you can buy things with the money you earn. And so you can buy, I want to double the value of my questions. So instead of them being worth $100, I want them to be worth $200. And so then I'll get richer and richer and richer. Uh, or if I, I want to, or after I answer a question correctly, I can buy, I want to get a bonus for answering five in a row, right in a row. So that'll give me $1,000. And then the game constantly builds and then you, you can buy more and more and more power-ups over the course of the game. So those kids who know their stuff are competing with the other kids who know their stuff uh, and trying to get on the leaderboard. And some kids have like figured out all the game theory of this and like which ones to buy. Uh, and then you can turn on features where uh, you can take points away from your opponents. So 
uh, if you want to do that. So you can say, okay, well, if this kid gets this question wrong, then they have to lose like lots of money. So, and it's basically a game <clears throat> built out by a high schooler. He's probably like 19 or 20 now. Uh, and he just built it out and he's just constantly tinkering with it, and expanding on it. He had a whole Avengers theme once, um, Thanos mode it was called. So uh, it's a really cool tool. In terms of our environment now, you can basically say students have to do, play the game until they earn so much money. Uh, and so it's not necessarily a competition with uh, other kids uh, in the same time frame, but everyone has to play the game and get so much money playing. Uh, it's do you a, get to good. make your questions or are, do they have a question bank that you can okay, pull Okay, good question. From? So the way that I used it, and I think uh, it might've changed, I haven't played with it in a year or made a new one in about a year, but uh, the way I could do it was my Quizlet had the term and the definition, and I could upload that data set into GimKit, and then GimKit would basically know that these are the terms and these are the definitions. And then it would jumble these up and say, okay, here's four, you know, here's the term, and then here's four of the uh, possible definitions, including the one that it has to be. So it does all the question creating for you which I think is awesome because Kahoot, you gotta make up every single question. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but this, it just uh, automatically generates the options. Uh, and the nice part about Quizlet, they have a lot of, you can download other people's question sets. Yep. I know I've created some of my own, but then I've used some that other people, I'm like, hey, this is already done. Why would I redo this? And yeah. So pull pull their question set in, and then if you can download it to the GIM kit. And GIM kit, that is, uh, is that the, what, like G-I-M-K-I-T? Is that yeah. Okay, that's so what I was thinking. GIM kit. You could have the GIF, GIF battle. Is it GIM kit or GIM kit? Or, I mean, I <laughs> disagree about that. But yeah, G-I-M-K-I-T. Good. That's how you say it. Uh, spell it out. I thought maybe people need to know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. G I M K I T. And there's free versions of that also. Um, but I think you're only given three to five sets of questions, so to speak, before you have to move up to a paid version. Okay. But you're paying, you know, some 20 year old kid in Seattle who has like maybe one employee now. So. If you want to support a small business. That's really cool that as a high school student, he developed that and he was able to, to get that through. That's pretty neat. That's a good story. Yeah. One of our teachers, uh, uh, Martin Fernandez found out about it and then he like communicates regularly with him. And you were in the early days. I don't know if you can anymore, but you could like, you know, chat with the owner during wow. class, Say, Hey, I think you should add this feature and he would write back. Oh. oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I know when we did the workshop last summer, you you're, you're, you guys, most of your teachers were nuts about that. You guys were, and brutal. We tried playing it once. You guys annihilated me. I did not uh, figure out the whole paint <laughs> things fast enough. You guys were all over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant experience. I'm sorry. I'm, sounds like you're still smarting from the loss, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> You guys had the system down. Yeah, it's a fun game. But we appreciate you taking time. Uh, sharing yeah, these with us, like you said, sharing out resources. I know um, we're going to end up wanting to have you back with some of the other things that you're working on. Sure. Sounds good. And uh, that way we can do another one. We want to keep them you know, fairly short here. But the, the digital lock boxes. Okay. That uh, I think that's going to be a good one for teachers too. I know Sarah's been working on that too, and so yeah. the two of you will be able to share out the things and how you're doing those. I think will be extremely valuable to the teachers. Yeah, that'd be cool. Happy to do it. Yeah. All right, rock on. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Take care. Too. Yeah.